So over the course of a few months, I was collecting some dry material from various cacti, including Lophophora and the Trico series that I experimented on. And after accumulating around around 10 grams dry, I proceeded to start my experiment on a completely food safe and low energy extraction. And this is the result of my extraction process. These are the impurities which were pulled from the extract using isopropanol. And this is after a major loss when I was trying to crystallize, I allowed it to go into the water, the water bath, and it was too much water for me to consider boiling off to try to recover. So the experiment in the end was a success. I'm nearly 100% sure this is the acetate of the alkaloid that I want. However, it's not enough that I can do an allergy test, nor do I have reagents to test this compound. But you can see that there was a lot of impurities pulled out. So in the past, there is a big, there is a big forum or thread on DMT Nexus that says mescaline acetate is soluble in is soluble in isopropanol I'm not sure if anyone verified that after the fact but what was dissolved was this and this does not look anywhere near what it should look like as this does and this was the remains of in a insoluble in the isopropanol this is at 70 percent the idea i had from this was that propanol can be used to make a to suspend uh, sodium acetate Sodium acetate is nearly insoluble in propanol, one propanol. This is two propanol and its properties are almost identical. So I experimented it and it seems to have worked. But again, I can't really confirm or say definitively that this is the acetate that I want. So my experiment well, took quite a while, it took around two weeks and the reason is because I was doing a completely green extraction depending on the volume of the vinegar or the water layer, aqueous layer. It can take a while to dissolve or evaporate depending on the weather and we had cold weather recently. This is from a second pull. I'm not really expecting much from here, but why not? Uh, this time around, I actually filtered through a cotton ball, so it's much clearer. The next time around, I'll be doing that more often. Filtering through a cotton ball, the vinegar mix. Since the alkaloids are water soluble it should pass through the cotton ball and impurities and solids will remain on the cotton ball but again this was just my first attempt unfortunately i messed up at the end but now i know that i won't reattempt to boil the isopropanol at the end i'll just try to boil some vinegar and try to recrystallize it that way 
the idea that I had to boil the isopropanol to try to dissolve the acetate was that meek M-E-K is a pretty well used uh, solvent that people use to clean up their acetate. They use cold meek to clean the impurities and then hot meek to recrystallize. The cold acid, uh, isopropanol worked in the same way and it doesn't even need to be cold uh, according to the paper at 25 celsius which is room temperature the solubility is very very low in one propanol i think it's around 0 0.001 or something like a very low amount per liter so that's very very low so I could have also used a larger vessel, but I don't have I don't have test tubes or anything. This is completely completely home home hobbyist with zero glassware. So I will be reattempting this. Unfortunately, I don't have a definitive answer on if it worked correctly, but I am very very excited to reattempt this. I'll be doing the video. It's kind of hard to make edits and everything since that's, I'm not really a pro on that, but hopefully someone attempts this and if they don't due to the end result of mine, I will be reattempting this in the future, hopefully with a larger amount of dry material. So with this experiment, you start with your dry material, you pulverize it however you want. With my material, it was used using the microwave popcorn method that I showed. It left a very, very dry, crumbly material similar to freeze drying, and I just pressed onto that with a like inside the glass I just pressed onto it with a, a flat surface and it crumbled very easily I didn't use a blender or anything and I simply saturated the solution with and I simply try to cover per volume 2 to 1 with the dry material. So I overshot it since the the glass that I had was extremely wide. It was harder to determine how much liquid I actually needed. The reason I chose a wide uh, glass vessel was so that there's more surface area for when I put the non-polar. So I placed a super saturated sodium carbonate uh, solution again 2 to 1 I overshot it maybe 3 to 1 and I left it for a couple of minutes uh, I didn't use any heat whatsoever during my extraction but you could easily heat the solution and then filter out the solids heat it again filter out the solids there's many ways to do this but again I didn't even use filtration so yeah so after putting the the solids into a alkaline solution the pH was around 12 to 13 closer to 12 I take that back the solution was around 12. According to some papers I've read, the maximum it could reach is around 12.1. So 12 is a good estimate. I got some pH paper afterwards and I tested 
and it's around 12 to 13, but it's not perfectly accurate, so 12 is the best educated guess. So after putting the alkaline solution in, what's occurring is that the, the, the alkaloids are being freed up due to the pKa being two to three over the pH is two or three over the pKa at three pH over the pKa 99.99 percent of the alkaloids are free at just two it's 99 percent or it's 90 so you don't need an outrageous pH to have the free alkaloids. And in theory, when I put the nonpolar, which in this case I used a vegetable oil, the free alkaloids will be moving towards the nonpolar due to the polarity. Uh, the free alkaloids will move on to the nonpolar. So I didn't film it, but I just put equal volume uh, vegetable oil to the aqueous layer. And you mix it so that I need to mix it with two hands. So in theory, you can use any vegetable oil. I chose canola oil since it's equivalent to rapeseed. Pure rapeseed isn't available here in Brazil. And canola oil is from rapeseed. It's just a genetic variation or modification. So I've seen in the past people use uh, sunflower oil if you were to use sunflower oil you would want one that's high in I think it's otalic high in otalic oil or something like that basically high in omega-3 this all of these should work but it seems from the research that I've done in theory the higher omega-3 is what pulls alkaloids better but again any type of vegetable oil works even uh, coconut oil but I think that coconut oil would have the worst usage in this application so the aqueous layer is from a saturated a saturated sodium carbonate solution and here it is I filmed putting that you can see that it was super saturated and the excess crashed out and crystallized uh, initially this was around 30 30 grams per per hundred millimeters milliliters so in a liter it'd be 300 grams of sodium carbonate but the temperatures dropped so initially it was all dissolved but since the temperatures are not passing maybe 22 it crashed out of solution So I just used the saturated portion that doesn't have any crystallized sodium car sodium carbide carbonate. So with the saturated sodium carbonate, it should have a pH around 12, which is enough to free at least 99% of the alkaloids that I want from this plant material you would have I don't have any p 
pH meter or testing paper. I purchased some recently, but I estimate that it's around 12. So it should be enough to free up the molecules. Depending on what you want to extract from your plant material, you would use a higher amount, which is not possible with sodium carbonate. You would probably use calcium carbonate, which I think can reach around 13, 13 pH. You shouldn't use lye since it would cause simplification of the vegetable oils. Okay, so I freed up the molecule that I want. I applied the vegetable oil as the non-polar layer. I mix it and then let it sit, mix it every once in a while. I'll be leaving this to do a liquid to liquid separation for at least two days, maybe longer. If I see that the paper will come in beforehand, I'll keep it even three days but two days at a minimum. And then you just separate the, the non-polar layer and then you acidify it to pull the salts. So this is a theory and we'll be testing it. Again, you can use any of the oils, vegetable oils. I chose canola oil. If this is a success, if this is a success, Next time I'll be using uh, soybean oil since it's the cheapest. And these were equivalent values and this is a bit more expensive. So I always try to use the most affordable and readily available. I chose this for the first time, but next time I'll try uh, soybean oil. And I used two days of mixing, not shaking so it doesn't cause em emotions, emotions, but flipping it upside down and mixing it well for two days. And then afterwards, so after two days of mixing, the oil layer with the aqueous layer. I separated the two. There is a small amount of plant material, which is not an issue since I'm not looking for 100% purity. There's still a small oil layer here. I'm going to add a saturated salt brine to the aqueous layer to see if it separates easier but I'll use a syringe slowly to extract it and here is the original color of the canola oil you can see it's much cloudier and a darker shade of yellow after two days mixing with the aqueous layer with a vinegar bowl. The vinegar I overshot and used pure 5% vinegar. So I pulled out a lot of other material. If I had pH paper, I would try to adjust it closer to 5 pH. The reason I would shoot for 5 and not 6 is because the non-polar actually increased the pH of the vinegar after the fact. So the pH of vinegar is around 2 or 3 and after the non-polar was mixed with it, it was around 4 or 5. So I would try to keep it around 5 to pull as little of other material as possible. So after the poles, I just evaporated. I didn't filter at the time. The next time I will. And so here's the end result. 
there is still a oil layer that will not dry so I'll have to scrape this all up redissolve it into a smaller separatory vessel and try to clean this up further there seems to be this this residue I assume that's the acetate but I have no idea so this method seems to work but it's quite messy and requires quite a bit of separation maybe a separatory funnel from the start would help reduce this cleanup so this is the first wash removing the oil layer I will let this cool down since I dried it over an open flame. There is nothing particularly shiny, but this is a pretty crude extract still. So I'll wait this out later and see if it's anywhere near the theoretical value that I have in mind of around 150 milligrams since I started with 9 grams I would assume around 1 gram is skin so very rough 8 grams of dried outer flesh should yield maybe one or two percent so it'd be it would be around 150 milligrams would be within my expectation from there I just evaporated everything and it was a very thick very thick goo after it was all scraped up and left for a while. I checked on a few forums and I posted questions and the best posts I received, the best reply was that the, the contents of the acetate or vinegar bowls, it's mostly carbohydrates so I checked if carbohydrates are soluble in isopropanol and they are extremely soluble so that's where I got the idea that it'll, it'll work and initially everything was going well I managed to pull around 135 milligrams of impurities so this was kept in the freezer for around 16 hours and there's two phases, a solid and a liquid. I'll be evaporating everything, but I wanna, my main interest is the bottom layer, which is the per precipitate. There's a better view. So the left is the the top phase of the isopropyl alcohol this is where the precipitate precipitate is you can kind of see how cloudy it is and here there's a solid on the bottom that for now I'm not going to disturb I'll probably try to place it in the corner here and I'll wash the entire the entire vessel with a little bit more of isopropanol and put it into the first drying plate. So it was washed with one milliliter of 
isopropanol. There's still a bit of solid, but that's fine. I'll just clean this out. Here is the washed remains. This is the bottom phase that has the precipitate. And this is the solid that was on the bottom. Not 100% of it, but a portion of it. Pretty much all of it has some fluorescent reaction to it, but it's not particularly strong. But here I can see the clear persist precipitate. It's white. And here there's some as well from the solid. Whereas here it's only the slight reaction, but this can also be from a small amount of vegetable oil, oil that's still remaining into in this mix, which I doubt, but it's possible. So yeah, I'll let this dry and we'll see if there's a more crystalline end product. So this is from the washing. This should be the contaminants. I'm doing another wash. This, this is the first two washes. I'm gonna weigh it up. Since I'm unsure where the actual alkaloids are, I'm saving it from the weight this may actually be the alkaloid that I want so for now I'm just saving it but in theory it should have been the participate precipitate that's still being washed but we'll see maybe it's maybe the the yield will be higher than I expected but in any case, I'll be saving this. And yeah. So this is the fourth wash. And I think I'll keep doing it to see if it stops getting off colored. The isopropanol washes. You can see there's a clear precipitate. And I'm keeping the, the washes. I filtered this through a cotton ball. First, I did the isopropanol with the filter, and then I passed uh, vinegar through the filter to pull anything that's uh, water and water soluble and uh, I guess vinegar soluble or the lower pH soluble and here's the result there's less brown material and there's a few solids on the filter Here I put the following isopropanol wash. You can see it stays separate, it doesn't dissolve. So here I shake it and let's see. Yeah, so it seems to be getting lighter each wash so hopefully after a few more times it'll it won't get as dark 
So for now, I'm using the freezer to lower the temperature and decrease solubility. However, according to the paper that I got this idea from, uh, one propanol, it, which I'm basing this on, this is two propanol, but one propanol, uh, sodium acetate, does not, it has a very, very low solubility even at 25 degrees with 30% one propanol. The, the solubility is around like 0 0.0002 milligrams per milliliter. So that's insanely low. Even per, per liter, it's like 0 0.009, I think. I'll link it in the paper or I'll link it in the description but I think someone messed up on saying that acetate is not or that acetate is soluble in in isopropanol Because you can clearly see it's not soluble, unless that's not the acetate. Which again, I could be wrong, and this is not the acetate. However, it does look pretty fine, fine needle-like after it settles. Yeah. I'm also leaving this to sit for around, give or take 12 to 16 hours. I could probably do it quite lower between washes, but it's just when I get around to it. So yeah. This is the residue that I believe are impurities. And after drying, I removed 135 milligrams from the original 490 something almost 500 gram or milligram goo so it's still within my estimated guess that it'll be around two or three percent and we'll see how much more is here remember that I also filtered some impurities i'm not filtering anymore since i got out most of it so up until until this final point where i attempted a crystallization everything went pretty well for my vessel i used a glass a glass dropper but there's a point at the end where the drops can be released or up, taken up. Originally, I was plugging it with some wax from candles. And that was working quite well. And I even put some cling wrap around it. And that was working perfectly well for the separation with the isopropanol in the freezer. But for some reason I thought it would hold up during a boil attempt of the isopropanol to try to dissolve the the unsoluble what I believe is the acetate at first they held up quite well but after leaving it a while to cool in its own inside of very hot water the the wax melted and I don't think the, that the 
the cling wrap held well. So there might have been, visually there was at least a 50% loss, but I'm going to weigh it just in case it, like the crystals compacted or something. So visually there was quite a significant loss in the unsoluble unless it was actually dissolved into the isopropanol but to figure that out I'm just going to dry everything and then I'll take the weight the total weight even taking off like 20 20 or 30 grams I'll start it off at 450 milligrams to cover any losses from transfers or whatever and hopefully it gets close to to that amount i didn't lose any of the residue or the yeah the dirty the dirty part of the acetone extract so i could just subtract there does seem to be some precipitate forming and I'm sure that there is some loss from every wash but yeah I'm just going to take, take the dry weight of everything and from there I can do a rough calculation on what the more refined solution weighs or should have weed and if it's close enough then I'll just use that so yeah just sharing that I did a big mistake with using an opened vessel to try to freeze participate precipitate or er, trying to freeze participate freeze precipitate it worked well but when I tried to boil the isopropanol it worked to hold at initially, but when leaving it too long, for some reason I thought it would hold up, but it didn't. I believe there was a bit of loss. After the loss, I just removed the vessel. I tried to re-plug, re scraping the, the bottom. And then I did a freeze precipitate again. I left it 12 hours. Inside the isopropanol phase on the top and then the, the insoluble on the bottom. On the top, you could see some crystalline, some crystals forming, very thin needles. I just poured the entire contain, con contents inside of this and I'll be drying it all at once the final wash it was on the fifth wash i didn't remove it but yeah in the future when i reattempt this i won't try to boil the isopropanol since at least at the volume i did which is around two milliliters the around 300 milligrams did not dissolve totally so either I'll need to use more isopropanol which is a solution or I could just use the acetate and try heating the acetate which should bring a better result and then trying to determine if the precipitate is actually the acetate I went over quite a bit of the old attempts on the internet and from what I can tell if I used calcium carbonate instead of sodium carbonate the calcium carbonate does seem to transfer over and the calcium is insoluble in the isopropanol according to what I've read however I use sodium 
and I doubt that the sodium is insoluble. I could be wrong as well. I don't think it transferred over, but who knows? I could just be wasting my time and this could all just be sodium. This could be the sodium carbonate that was insoluble and it got transferred over to the oil and then back. And I'm basically cleaning up sodium carbonate. If that's the case, then this should be where the acetate is. But there is zero crystalline growth. Or, yeah, there's zero needles that grow, zero. There's just a small, a very thin dust that, that you can see forming. So, yeah. So far, I'm saving both. You can see there's some precipitate there. But this one actually formed needles in the isopropanol after boiling and then putting in the freezer there was clear needles in in the isopropanol phase so later i'll heat this up and try to get it to crystallize and i'll weigh both to see if it's close to 450 milliliters so unfortunately I was correct and I had a major loss when I let the the vessel try to boil to dissolve this. I had a loss of very high amount. I have around 10% of what I had originally. Here's from the final wash with the impurities. It's 130 milligrams. So this should have weighed around 300 at the least. So I had a major, major setback. And I don't have any reagents to test, so It'll be a while until I can confirm which is which. And if this is the correct alkaloid that I want. From the original 472. But unfortunately I lost almost all of my final product trying to dissolve it in hot isopropanol which was my mistake but I'm pretty happy with the results and hopefully someone attempts this on their own and if not since the results aren't definitive yet I'll reattempt this in the future in a few months